Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over the periodic table and ions. This is part one. We're just going to kind of go over an overview of ions, the two kinds of ions, and how things become, how atoms become ions. And then in part two, we will solve some simple problems and answer some simple questions concerning ions. All right, so let's just go over some quick vocabulary we should all have in our heads. The periods on the periodic table, what is a period? The periods are the rows. Each row is a period. The groups on the periodic table, each column is a group on the periodic table. And then the atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus. Each uh, element has a different number of protons in its nucleus. The atomic number tells us how many protons there are in the nucleus and therefore identifies what kind of element we have. Atomic number tells us what kind of atom it is. Okay, we said earlier that we talked about periodic table and atoms. Now we're going to talk about periodic table and ions. Atoms are neutral. They have no charge. Ions, an ion is a charge particle, a positive or a negative charge. Why is it charged? It's charged because the number of electrons is not equal to the number of protons. And how do they become charged? They become charged by gaining or losing electrons. You cannot really gain or lose protons. They're too tightly held in the nucleus. So an ion is a charged particle. The number of electrons is not equal to the number of protons. And atoms, which are neutral, become charged when they gain or lose electrons. Now there are two kinds of ions. There's the cation and there's the anion. When an atom loses one or more electrons, it becomes what we call a cation. When an atom gains one or more electrons, it becomes what we call an anion. And I like to think of it like this, cat cut, cutting off electrons, you become a cation. Gaining electrons is like adding a, adding electrons, you become an anion. Now, when you lose electrons, you lose negative things, you become positively charged. When you become an anion, you gain electrons, you gain something negative, so you become negatively charged. The types of elements that form cations are the metals, they're on the left side of the periodic table. The types of elements that form anions are the nonmetals, they're on the right hand side of the periodic table. Okay, so these are opposites, really, cations and anions. One loses, one gains electrons. One becomes positive, one becomes negative, one's a metal, one's a nonmetal, one's on the left, and one's on the right side of the periodic table. Now, this would be a very good place for you to pause the video, get out your periodic table. We're going to write some things on the periodic table. So, pause. Okay, now you're back, you have your periodic table, and the first thing you should do is draw this stair-step line on your periodic table. You, mine is green here. You can do yours differently if you want, but you should draw that on there with a pen or a pencil or some other color. Then I'm going to make sure that I have my groups numbered right across, one through 18. There are 18 columns on the periodic table. There are 18 groups on the periodic table, okay? Those are the first two things. Now, before we write anything else, I'm just going to show you that this is what we divide. This stair-step line divides the left from the right side of the periodic table. It's not right here in the middle. This is the left side, this is the right side. We said the left-hand side is where we have our cations. The cations are the metals, okay? The metals are on the left-hand side. You can see iron, cobalt, gold, silver, some things we don't really think of as metals, sodium, lithium, but these are all metals. The metals tend to lose electrons. They tend to form positive ions and we call those ions cations. Now, on the right-hand side, I'm talking about everything basically on the right-hand side, except this very last group, group 18. Those are the noble gases. Their outer shells are full, so they do not form ions. These elements do not form ions in general, but the others that are in this kind of triangular area, groups 13 through 17 up here, they are non-metals, they gain electrons, they form negative ions, and we call those things the anions. Okay? So I just want to review that. Left metals, right nonmetals. Lose, gain, positive, negative, cation, anion. 
you can see once again they're basically opposites of each other. Now let's look at some specific groups, some specific columns. This is the first column. This is the first group. All of these elements in this group have one electron in their outermost shell. When they form bonds, they like to lose that electron. When they lose that electron, they form a positive one charge. So group one elements form positively charged ions. They have a positive one charge, lithium through francium. Okay, the lithium group. Now, the next group over, group two, beryllium, the beryllium group, they have two electrons. All of these elements have two electrons in their outermost shell. When they form chemical bonds, they like to lose those electrons. If you lose two electrons, then you become positively charged and you have a charge of positive two. Now, this whole block here in the middle, these are transition metals. Some of them form different charges. Some of them will only form one charge, like silvers plus one, but they don't follow any particular pattern. Generally, you have to look those up. These you should know, plus one, plus two, the whole column. But we're going to skip over here to group 13, and we're going to talk about aluminum down, because boron is not a metal. From aluminum down, they have three electrons in their outermost shell. When they form chemical bonds, ionic bonds, they like to lose those three, and therefore they become positively charged, a positive three. You lose three negatives, you become positively charged with a plus three charge. Okay, now we're going to skip. These are all the positives, plus one, plus two, and from aluminum down, those form plus three, those metals. Now, this group right here, group 17, fluorine, the fluorine group, they want to gain one electron. When they gain one electron, they gain one negatively charged thing, they have a negative one charge. So that's this group, the fluorine group. Then oxygen, the oxygen group, they want to gain two electrons to fill their outermost shell in an ionic bond, and therefore they're going to have a negative two charge. You gain negatives, you become two negatives, you have a negative two charge. And then the last group from oxygen down, and the last group we're gonna talk about is negative three, okay, or the nitrogen group. They tend to want to gain three electrons if you gain three electrons, then you have a negative three charge. Now these in the middle here, they kind of can go both ways, so we're not gonna use those as our rules, but our rules are group one, group two plus one and plus two, group 13 plus three, group 17 minus one, group 16 minus two, group 15 minus three. You should have those things, those charges written down above each of those groups on your periodic table, okay? Those are the rules that you should know. Now, before we officially go on, I'm going to show you my periodic table. Look how nice my periodic table looks. I have all that information written down on my periodic table. Group 1, plus 1. Group 2, plus 2. Group 13, plus 3. Group 17, minus 1. Group 16, minus 2. Group 15, minus 3. I put a 0 here because these elements, my noble gases don't form charges, so I just want to make sure I know that, remember that. I also wrote on my periodic table, for reference, metals, because the left-hand side is the metals. They tend to form positive ions because they lose electrons, and you could also, which I did not write down here, you could write down cations. Okay, now, on the right-hand side, we have our nonmetals. So I wrote down nonmetals. I know the nonmetals form negative ions because they gain electrons, and I can write down here anions, okay? So that is what your periodic table should look like. It should have all of that information written on it. Even if your teacher won't let you use it on a test, at least you'll have it for reference when you're working on problems, and then you will learn that material without having all that stuff written on there. You should know those patterns. It's not that difficult. Left, right, positive, negative, okay? Now, we're going to go and Okay, this is the information we had. I'm going to run through this really quickly one more time. Okay. And like I said, you should have all the information on your periodic table. This is what I wrote down, and you should have all this written down, and then you'll have it all for reference when you need to work on problems. All right? 
Now, here is a quick block on the periodic table. I'm just going to go over some of these things really quickly here. This is magnesium. This Mg is the symbol. We call that the symbol for magnesium. Then we have the atomic number, number 12. That tells us how many protons there are. Magnesium has 12 protons in its nucleus. And this number, which we haven't used yet, is the average atomic mass. We'll do that in the next video. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful. That's ions, cations, anions, the left side, the right side, positive, negative, and you should be able to answer those questions concerning the characteristics of those two kinds of ions. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, you can give me a thumbs up 